Hi, we're going to be discussing expected value. Now, we're going to have this thing called expected value. We have an equation for it and it has to do with a discrete random variable x. That's why I put this in here because it's discrete. Get it? He's like trying to give this guy money. Uh, so discrete random variable. That looks complicated. We call it a capital X. It's just a variable. We're just going to be calling it a discrete random variable. This is the part that confuses people, but it, it doesn't have to. I think it could be a lot simpler. So first, let's just look at the equation, how it goes. So it goes that the expected value is called capital E with a capital X, okay? And it goes like this. All we do is we do the sum. That's this symbol here for the sum of every X times every probability. Here's where it looks confusing because you got a lot of different X's going on. Doesn't that look kind of crazy? But this is the equation we get. This is on your form in the booklet. That's the good news. I'm going to spend a little bit of time just explaining it. And I promise you this, once you get it, this is an easy equation. It just looks bad. So what does this mean? Look, we've got too many x's. Capital X is just this discrete random variable. You don't have to worry about it so much. What I would say is important is you got little x's and you got the probability of that thing being x. So really, the way I think of it is this. You want to just add up. Maybe I'll write it like this. So add up all the x times p of x. This is really kind of, this is how I actually do it, okay? So this just means add up. So you're going to have a bunch of different x values, like lowercase x. Those are just different values that uh, your discrete random variable can be. Uh, I'll explain it in context. I've got two examples for you to help it make sense here. But basically you take every x, you multiply it by the probability of getting that x, and you just add up all those. So if you had three different situations, then you got to do, you know, the first one times its own probability plus the second one times that probability plus the third one times that probability and so on. So although this looks complicated, it doesn't have to be. So let me show you. Uh, wait, I got a few different tips to give you. Um, if something's going to be a fair game, it just means that the expectation, the expected value is going to be zero. Okay, so that's the gain of your player here. So we expect that to be zero. Um, this one here, look at this. So travel expectations, travel reality. I thought that was kind of cute, actually. Um, uh -huh. Also, we know that all the probabilities right here, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll remove the gain of the player part, actually, because that's not quite... Uh, it depends how you look at it. It could actually be misleading, I think. Let me just change the text here, and I'll just... I'll remove the gain of the player part. That's maybe not as... Uh, I'm worried that it might be a little bit misleading. The expected value is zero. I think that's the, the better way to say it. There you go. Change my mind. There we go. So, for a game to be fair, expected value is zero. Um, in other words, the player shouldn't gain anything, or at least the, the expected value should be zero. Uh, probabilities should all add up to one, as usual for probabilities. This one just makes me laugh. And let's go ahead and do uh, an example. So a person rolls a six-sided die, and you win the number of dollars shown on the face. So for example, if you roll a six, you get six dollars. If you get a uh, I was about to say seven. If you get a three, you get three dollars, and so on. What is the expected amount won on a roll? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to set up this thing with these um, discrete random variables. So I'm going to say lowercase x, a little x, and we might have different outcomes. We might get a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6. Now we're going to assume it's a fair die. In other words, the probabilities of getting each of these will be the same. But watch carefully. I'm going to say the probability of my discrete random variable, capital X, being lowercase x, I'm just using the proper notation here. What it really means is, what's the probability of getting a 1? Well, it should be 1 over 6. Does that make sense? And the probability of getting 2 should also be 1 over 6. This should be 1 over 6. This should be 1 over 6. This should be 1 over 6. And this should be 1 over 6. And if I add up all these probabilities, they should add up to 1. There we go. Still like the Leaning Tower of Pisa thing, right? All right, so... Mm, Let's do the expected value now. So I'm just going to write down the formal equation for expected value. It's just going to be the sum of all the x's times all the p of... I'm just going to write lowercase x just like that. I'm not going to bother with capital X equaling lowercase x. I'm just going to be a little bit sloppy and just go add up all the x's times the p of x's. Well, watch carefully then. I know all these values. Look, the expected value then, 
capital X here is going to be, let's see, 1 times 1 over 6. Do you see what I'm doing? Plus, let's see, the next one, so 2 times 1 over 6. Now sometimes these are different, so you have to be very careful. In this case, it's going to be pretty easy. It's just keep going like this, right? I just add up each of the x's times its probability, so the probability of getting that x value. So in this case, we have this. All right. Now if I keep going then, what's the probability, uh, sorry, the expected value? It's 1 times 1 over 6, which is 1 over 6, plus 2 over 6, plus 3 over 6, plus 4 over 6, plus 5 over 6, plus 6 over 6. Then I can add them up. Well, uh, they've got a common denominator, so that's kind of nice. So I can go 6 plus 5 plus 1 for, oh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll do 4 plus 6 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Uh, that gives me 18, 20, 21. So I got 21 over 6. Now I can do it, this is the exact value, okay? So I'll say, so the expected value is going to be 21 over 6. Unless it divides by, oh no, never mind, I can reduce it actually. They, uh, it divides, 21 can divide by 3, it's 7, and 6 divides by 3, it's 2. So it's actually going to be 7 over 2, which is going to be, uh, what's that, 3.5. If you want it on your calculator, you can do it that way. So this is the answer. So you might wonder, like, wait, Aren't probabilities, don't probabilities have to be less than one? Yeah, the probabilities do. But this isn't probability we're doing now. We're using probabilities, sure. There's probabilities within this. But the expected value, there's nothing that says expected value can't be greater than one. In fact, it often is. So what this really tells you is that you expect to win. This is maybe the conclusion, right? You expect, you know, to win about $3.50 each game. This is what you would be expected to win. Okay, so that's the how we could use this. Now, if it costs four dollars to play the game, is it worth it to play? Well, no. Why not? Costs more to play than uh, your winnings, or at least your expected winnings. So this is, I think, you could say that. So that's why you probably shouldn't play. By the way, this is how casinos work. They always make sure that they've calculated the expected uh, earnings and make sure that they charge you more on average. That's why casinos make money. So we can do another example. So here's another example here. We have the expected value. We want to do the expected value of this. P of x equals x. So capital X equals lowercase x of 1 over 18, 4 plus x or x is an element of 1, 2, and 3. This looks complicated, sure. But let's just break it down here. Let's figure out what's the expected value. Well, it's equal to the sum of every x times every probability of getting that x. So all we have to do then is just make a table. Maybe I'll make a table now. I'll touch lowercase x here. We'll do, all right, so if I get a 1, I can get a 2, and I can get a 3. And I want the probability of that big X being little X here. What's the probability of getting a one? This is just a rule for the probabilities here. So watch, if I get a one here, one plus four is five, right? So that's five over 18. How about two here? Two plus four is six, so six over 18. Three, so four plus three is seven, seven over 18. Now, if it's a real probability distribution function, these had better add up to a to 1. Let's see. Uh, 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 plus 7 is 18. Good. 18 over 18. So this works. This will this will be a real thing. And remember, the probabilities always have to add up. Remember, the sum of all the probabilities has got to be 1. So this seems to work. So now we can go ahead and calculate the expected value. So the expected value will be, let's see, I just multiply every x times its p of x. So I go 1 times 5 over 18 plus 2 times 6 over 18 plus 3 times 7 over 18. All right, so what do I do here? 1 times 5 is 5 over 18. 2 times 6 is 12 over 18. And 3 times 7 is 21 over 18. All right. Uh, so that would be, let's see, this is 21 plus 12, so that's 33, that'll be 38 over 18. Do that on my trusty old calculator here. What's 38 divided by 18? 
give me the answer. It's 2.11 roughly, so approximately 2.11. That's my expected value. I'm done. So although this stuff looks really complicated, there's nothing to it, right? All you have to do is just look at this equation here. Take every x, multiply it by its probability, add up the next x and its probability, add up the next one. Just keep going. That's your expected value. Now, why should you care? I mean, this is useful for predicting. Casinos, game of chance, all that stuff works this way. Um, I thought a really interesting one is sometimes things break from what's expected. So something called Benford's Law. I can tell you this. When I first learned about this, I'm not kidding when I say I never saw the world the same again. This is true. There's this weird thing. See, we would expect, this is really weird. It turns out um, you would expect if you saw a bunch of random numbers. Let's just say I, I gave you like, a, here's a population of all the towns, uh, of all the major cities in your country. Let's say the population of the major cities in your country. What you would do is, no matter what the population is, whether it's a million or a hundred thousand or you know fifty thousand, whatever, or one thousand or two hundred, whatever, this re really weird thing is that if you take all the digits to the right and you remove them and you just keep the leading number, the the first number you see, you would expect those to be pretty random, wouldn't you? You'd expect them to be like ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, seven, eights, and nines should be equally likely. You would expect that, wouldn't you? Benford's law shows that, nope, we have this probability distribution function that actually does not match what's expected. It turns out the preponderance, like the number of times you get a leading one, is actually 30% for some weird reason. And a two is actually 17%, and a three like this. This actually follows a distribution function. It actually follows a function that goes like, uh, what would it be here? I think it's the probability of getting D. It's going to be log base 10 of, what is it, 1 plus... How is it? It's 1 plus d over uh, 10, which is so weird. Like, what? Why would this be? And it's so weird. This works for population. It works for voting, in fact. You can use this to tell if people are cheating with voting because the number of times people vote for someone should follow Benford's law, which means there should be a lot more 1s than 2s than 3s for the leading number. And so if people have made up things, then it doesn't follow Benford's law. It's sort of, it's not... It's Benfordness is less. This works for um, crazy things like um, what, like craters, the size of craters on Earth, for example, like just the radius of those. It works for things that we do. It looks, it works for just naturally occurring math problems. It even works for like the distance to galaxies. It doesn't even matter what scale you use. This is insane. It's almost like there's some structure to the universe, which is great. Uh, and we don't quite know why. There's a lot of explanations maybe why, but this is so ridiculous. It would be a cool IA, although maybe uh, everybody will do an IA on this, but honestly, it is truly cool. If you want to check out a good uh, show, look at on, if you get Netflix, a show called Connected. This uh, really brilliant guy named Latif Nasser, um, he did it. He did one of his uh, episodes on digits. He talks about this and he goes, he shows it. It is so interesting. But anyway, back to expected value. It's really neat, you can calculate what's expected.